Hello everybody and welcome to the video I've been wanting to make for nigh on four or five years. I am older, I am fatter, at the moment I am much sweatier because we're in this sweat box. It is quarter past six in the evening and we have had a 30 degree out. out it's it's, it's 32.5. 32.5. It's a giggle, but it's worth it and I can tell you why it's worth it. Because we get to touch the UDOS, well I get to touch it, you get to watch. Um, this is only one in the UK. The only one in the UK. Yeah. It's a very special machine. Uh, Kelly, tell us about this machine. So obviously it's um, a machine that's been designed, developed and made by LC Power Tools. Mm -hmm. It's, as you said, been a long time in the making. I've been very fortunate to see prototypes of the clever mechanism inside there. And we had a discussion earlier that you, you, you do actually I think remember it as a four in one or a three in one. Yeah. Well, it's varied, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's grown in the amount of functions it could do. Um, so it was starting off less, it's now a five in one action machine, and it's, it's covering five different types of orbits and a rotary, sort of four orbits and a rotary. So for, for the geeks out there and, and me, what, we have rotary function, yes. conventional yeah. rotary function. Which is the R, there's an R on there. That... Handy. Yep. And then we have S for sanding, which you could use yeah. for so polishing. That's, that's a, it was a decision made that is eight mil orbit, which is your old style machines from years ago, which was all you had. And in the early days you had a transformer because it was an American machine. You yes. Know, it was literally 110, 240. And it was an eight mil orbit. And it was always traditionally really difficult, and it still is, to get the best cut with an eight mil machine. We're talking heavy cutting, you know, to get rid of swells. So sanding has changed over the years from a two and a half mil orbit to a five mil. And I think uh, there's another machine manufacturer come out with, they call it a dual machine, where it's a 12 mil. So mm -hmm. they said it can be sanded and polished. I'd argue if 12 is a very large action for sandpaper, but of course you can compensate that action for the greater sandpaper. Yes. And that's all it is, it's just an action size against the coarseness of the grit. You make a larger movement, you're mm -hmm. going to cut more. And so you want to find a grit. Yeah. Like so so it, was a, it made sense that there's already other orbits in there. So what they've basically done is an 8 mil, a 12 mil, a 15 mil, and a 21. That has, at the moment, covered everything that's on the market. And it goes, as I say, from rotary to the biggest orbit that you get on any polishing machine yeah. now. Which so is, at the moment, cool. you're in position three, which is actually the, the largest DA action, 21 mil. Um, so if you wanted to do any of the DA actions, you just line up that blue collar there, so this so, one there, you line it up. I'm going to do this now as if I've never done it before. In fact, I did it two minutes ago before we had a slight technical failure, but essentially this bit moves around here like that. So we're going to put this into the middle and then we can pull this down, yeah, put it down like that. And turn it. That's and it. then you can adjust. So that's P2, 15 mil. P1, 12 mil. That's it. S, 8 mil. And now rotary won't line up. Oh, you was lucky. You were so lucky this is lined up. <laughs> That's the chance. Already a master of this tool. Because <laughs> I was about to show you that there's a different process for the rotary. I've made life really different, haven't I? <laughs> That's easy. So, so when it's in the rotary mode, all three lines have to line up. And okay. that's very rare when you stop a machine that all three lines would line up. It's magic. magic. Yeah, it was magic. So yeah. yeah, so at the moment you can go back into there. Now if this turns, that's still lined up. You'll see now. You struggle. It won't go in. It physically won't go in. Oh, well, give me a monkey wrench, I'll have a crack. So until, until that line, it's very simple, all three lines line up. Then it will. Yeah, and I'm not even looking straight on, you know. it's So now it's in rotary, now it's locked. I'm going to compare this to a Glock 17. If you it's haven't a, taken one apart, hunk, yeah. if you haven't taken one apart, it's a bit of a pain. But as soon as you've done it a couple of times, yeah. it's really, really easy. And It's a completely new action that no one's ever done with a machine polisher before. You've got new new hand motion, isn't it? Yeah, it's you, muscle memory required. Yeah, pulling the trigger, it, we're all familiar how you pull a trigger. Now there's this new thing to do to change it, which has never been seen before. It could become a special code, it's like Ford Assist in the NSW. <laughs> anyway, moving away from guns rapidly. Um, I've noticed you've, you've got three noses. Yes. So What that, do you call these? Horns? Handles. Handles. You just wanted to be a bit kinky, didn't you? No. Yeah, I'm sure you did. I didn't think it was called a horn. I thought this was a big horn. No. No? Okay. My bad. Never mind. So these handles are for people with different sized hands? Yeah. Yeah. Styles? And Joe, you know I'm even going to say, because I've, I've not got, I've got very large hands for my physical body size. They're very soft. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And um, so that means you'd think I'd like, use a large. Mm -hmm. It's 
there's a different reason when I use different handles, and some people have their own ways. The reason why I've got this one, bear in mind that the machine comes with a medium sized handle, wouldn't mm -hmm. make sense. So this is the option of extra small handle. And the reason for that is it's simply more in rotary mode, I can actually tip and rock very easily. Yeah. That would be more awkward, but some people that may be not as strong would like the purchase of that to twist. But that's like the handle, I find that very awkward where that is a very natural motion. So, and also having this smaller nose means I have more clearance around protruding for mirrors. Yeah. Spoilers. And, and also just yeah. for visibility. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah, yeah. totally. You said you were a novice. You're not I a am a total novice. <laughs> so, but the um, other thing, so the, the answer with the handles is not how big it is, it's what you do with it. Yeah. And <laughs> in terms of study. But you've got three you size got three. options. And they've all been, it, it does feel like it's been ergonomically designed. It's long developed. Yeah. period. Rubber yeah. bumpers. So on here. When it sits down, you know, very early machines just to roll over. Yeah, that was you put it in your trolley and it roll over, flop over. So you've got, and they're replaceable. Yeah, but so they wear them down. Yeah, they, they, this is replaceable. You don't want to rub it on its back too much. <laughs> um, and the whole, the whole piece of kit, and what I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm being honest here, it's a chunky monk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I could, I could, if you held it like this and, and had a bit of momentum behind it, I'm thinking cricket bat. It's a decent weight, but yeah. that's kind of a quality thing. I think there are two sides to it. Well, One it's is metal. There's a lot more metal in there. There's a lot more metal in the gearbox, and bear in mind the gearbox is a, is again heavy duty gearbox. Yep. Seems very Wait, well. Wait, I said earlier this is metal. Exactly. You can hear. That's rock hard, solid, better here. And as I say, with, with 1,200 watts and all of the gearage going on there. The one thing you noted, and it's something that I think is important to say, so that when you get hold of yours, because obviously you're going to get one of these, um, so that you don't run to the hills and think there's something wrong, because of the gearage in here, because this is metal as well, which, which converts heat, it gets warm. It doesn't get yeah. hot. You can't and, find and it. And that was one of my staff using it for an entire day on, on a car. And I asked him, again, it was like, here it is. Put it in the setting you'd normally use. Mm -hmm. You do what you need to do with it. And at the end of the day, I said to him, how do you get on? He said, it's fine. Um, he said, weight is not an issue on obviously all the flat panels. Mm -hmm. It wasn't overly heavy. It's a few hundred grams heavier, but it wasn't hard to get used to. There is a, a way we polish, we've got our hoists and we've got the stalls, so mm -hmm. we rest our elbows on our legs yeah. when we're polishing. It then, none of it is a problem, is it? And there's no issues at all there. And he said, the only thing he noticed, literally was the one thing, it got warm. So what bit got warm? And he said, this, this metal piece, oh, yeah, it's the gearbox and it's metal. And it's a heat sink. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was a, a long polishing all day, constant polishing. Um, it's characteristics, I'm going to say. It's a, it's a it's change. A, it's an attribute. It's, yeah. not, it's not a fault. So no. if your gearbox is getting hot, unless it's getting too hot to touch. That's like you're driving your car saying, my engine's got warm. That happens quite a lot. In fact, I, I shouldn't have, have said that to you yeah, with no, the head gasket and, yeah. okay, that was a wrong use. Your gearbox oil gets warm after a long time of driving. It does indeed. And yeah. this has got warm after a long time of being used all day. That was probably safer. That was safer. Yeah. We should have gone to that in the first place. Thank God this is recorded. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in summary, as I say, it, is chunky. it reminds me, frankly, of an older, an older heavier machine. It's, it, to me, I think I'm certain when I weighed it, um, I didn't have weighing scales because it paint back then when I had a Makita. Mm -hmm. I think my front of house has actually Googled the weight of Makita and I think this is exactly the same as a single all or rotary action machine which everyone grew up on mm -hmm. and we all remember buying one because it was an improvement on body shot machines <laughs> and that was much larger than this in physical size that also got hot it was very noisy but it never wore out it was robust. In fairness, in those days also, nobody had power steering, so we were all built like this anyway. Um, but we say, it, it's the same weight as what a single action machine was doing years ago, and I never worried about weight. I didn't ever have anybody tell me, ah, oh, that machine was heavy. Too heavy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's an attribute. Yeah. So that's and it, and it didn't have the nose handle that we're all familiar with now. It had a big D handle. Sure. And it, because it was the only option, no one complained. Yeah, it was it was the only good option. You had. Well, they were the good old days, and you had half a baked bean for dinner, and you felt <laughs> full. Anyway, moving on again. Uh, this is actually a more unique machine than any other that you would have seen on the internet for the simple reason this is two hundred and forty volts. And um, what I want to ask is, how long is your ding dong going to be? Or do you not know? <laughs> well, should we mention how ding dong now? I don't actually know. Whatever that length is, that so I'm, this I'm is. Can we have talk about this actually? This is pretty much. It's the last 
pre-production, or it's the last gotcha. prototype, sorry, and it's, it's not going to change. What you see now is what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. It's just being mass produced now, if that makes sense. So whatever that chord is, is what we're going to get. And that, I think, is probably well, 200 inches. <laughs> um, okay, so well, hang on, let's do it, let's do it in case. And you stand still, stand up. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. So put it, this will be one and a half of me, isn't it? Oh, yeah, right. it's one and a half Kelly. There, there we go, new SR unit, one and a half Kelly's. If it's not long enough, complain to Kelly. Um, now, I want to talk briefly, because we're, we're, as I say, this is a whistle-stop tour. We're going to get a play with it. We're going to put a full review in issue 11 of the magazine, uh, warts and all, because that's how we work. Yep. Um, but I want to talk to you about pads, yes. because you know Kelly's role here, part of it from Lakeham's point of view, is expertise. He is a professional detailer with God knows how many years of experience. Well, we do know exactly how many years mm -hmm. of experience. Yeah. Too many. Too many. <laughs> and um, it's about um, honing the, the pad set that uh, Lakeham already produce. And bear in mind, there are two companies at play here. It gets yes. terribly complicated. It's a family-owned business, well, but there's two separate businesses. Two entities. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point going to the But there's a, there's a crossover. There is, there is. We've been talking yeah. about it. Yeah. In terms of the adrenaline pack level, I mean, I was, I was all G'd out by the time this came in, it has to be said. But long story short is because this is designed to be an all-in-one machine, there has been a motion to try and create an all-in-one pad, or at least a pad that can be used in all the different settings with this machine. And that was, that's the biggest feat of engineering there, is actually we've all got familiar now that pads in all brands and manufacturers, they've all widened their range of pads to be very specific. And it comes back to, we talked about in a video about what was the one thing you would choose and what's changed. And I actually quoted a microfiber pad. Yes. It's changed the trade a lot. Most people would understand that wouldn't work very well on a rotary and it's not really designed for that. So we are now in an age where there's many types of orbits and sizes mm -hmm. and strokes of machines and people are now Obviously, the country manufacturer has been a big contributor to that, making pads specific, very, very specific, almost niche for just a certain orbit or throw. So this is really tricky for them, isn't it? Because they've it's gone kind of backwards. So going to best be as yes. specific as possible, and now they've got to be as general as possible. Yes. It's tricky. So to try and make, say, like this pad here, which is a, a, a micro wall, this works, so it's not a microfiber and it's not no. a wall pad, to make this pad work for all motions. Mm -hmm and now they've had to engineer and use all their knowledge of specific engineering of each pad and make a general pad that's going to work very, very efficiently on all the settings. So that's why we got called the Udo, the Udo mm -hmm. pad, is a line of pads, which is only three at the moment, which seems a very small amount, and I mm -hmm. think at the moment I might be involved possibly making bespoke for even the European market or okay. the UK market. It could happen. Well, it's a needs and wants thing. Yes. And again, in America, it's yeah. all about the all-in-ones. I'm big fans of the all-in-ones, yes. you were saying. And so over here, part of the joy of detailing, part of the uh, thing that you gain with experience is you can look at paint, if you're at Kelly's level, you can look at paint and you can assess, uh, given a machine and a compound and a pad, and you can kind of get pretty close first time in what you want. And it's the ability to be able to adjust all of those things. So the risk with an all-in-one is you end up with a jack of all, master of none. Now, the good news is it'll still work in terms yeah. of doing what you're doing. But, um, it's, but it's what we've essentially got here is now five different actions and three different pads which makes 15 different combinations so if you were to choose the p215 mil machine mm -hmm. you would have to have obviously lots more pads to have the variation of what you get here with three pads i've got it says 15 choices with only three pads you would have to have a, a rotary you'd have to buy, you'd have to buy 15 pads it would seem Hard work and doesn't make sense. It would, but so I feel there's a more, slightly more knowledge, tuition on my behalf, mm -hmm. so that people understand when would you use this pad, on what setting, in what situation. Does that make sense? So the only really variation from what we already do in terms of choosing pad, compound, and machine is that the machine stays consistent, but it doesn't because you change its mode. And I mean, yeah. for example, if this was. Uh, this quite short head on the on the ball side, so it's gonna on the one hand it will clog very easy, but on the other hand you can't have long hair if you've got a long throw because it won't. Well, it's it just won't. flopping to and fro. It's not actually a braid in the surface. And you don't want a floppy wool when you're using a <laughs> 15 mil. <laughs> is what he was trying to say. So the answer is, yes, they've, and, and bear in mind, that with Lake be making so many pads, it would be well within their interest to do a thousand different pads for us, because then they can make a thousand different cells. But actually, they've said, no, we are going to try and make it nice this, and this simple. This is almost a different business model that they're trying to make 
what you see here, in, in, excluding that, but these are a nice option. That there should cover everything for a, a general purpose person. Mm -hmm. It will cover everything. Where there's a, a slight pain point, let's call it a pain point, is like I said, they wouldn't possibly know exactly what setting. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's going to need more tuition or understanding. This is a, I'm going to it, it's a professional machine. Yes. I think people that buy this would probably, hopefully not, need my help and understand what a 21 mil action does compared to a 12 mil action. Mm -hmm. And would completely understand whatever pad they chose in compound that the 12 mil, hopefully, that done so 12 mil orbit is going to have a lot less cutting ability than a 21. Yes. If they don't know that, then... You put the machine down and <laughs> maybe, to but it, it's also, remember though, what about someone that's starting new that now hasn't got to buy five different machines well, that's an interesting topic you bring up because it's a commercial argument. Yeah, this yeah. is this is tricky because if you're an established professional detailer, you're going to have a big range of machines, yeah. different machines for different tasks. And you've understood the differences. You understand the differences, yeah. and the machines, because they're dedicated to a single movement, yes. may be slightly better, or they don't. For example, if you've got a, a lightweight rotary, this is heavier than a lightweight rotary, yeah. and so you might want to revert to that. So who is this for? And the answer is, I think, threefold. One is, if you've got lots of employees, you don't want to buy each of your employees three or four different machines right. when you can just give them one of these. Yes. Um, the other thing is if you're, I mean, I'm just thinking if you're running mobile and that's you brilliant, do then. occasional yeah. detailing now yeah. and then, that's going to work really, really well. Looking at the fitments here, I wouldn't be surprised if a cordless thing came out at some point. Nor um, would I. We, we, we yeah. didn't comment possibly yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's that. Um, and then the other side is, again, if you're starting out, if you want to hone it, you get these people saying, oh, you're not a proper detailer unless you just but use But remember, I'm here to aid those people. Help to usher them along. And help them and teach them how to use and get the best out of the machine. This is why I've come on board. It's, so you can see there's a, there's a need because this is a very specialized machine, but a jack of all trades as well, mm -hmm. because it can do all of them in one, but it's also very specialized. It's the first of its kind. It, it, it's like someone buying a McLaren Senna or buying some, and I'll, I'll use a McLaren analogy where they've come on the market late. Yes. You've got Ferrari and Lamborghini. It's slightly poor, but Ferrari and Lamborghini have been doing it for years. McLaren's come on the scene with almost like hydraulic suspension with no springs and all mm. active damping, which, and, they, and they've come into the scene with a brand new product, changed the rules, which are there, and it has mixed reviews because it's so different. Yeah. And I think if McLaren, as an example, had a lot more of the engineers behind it explaining and say teaching the owners how to get the best out of the car, they might have had a slightly better start. I, and there is a such things coming out too soon because quite yeah. often things do come out. Thankfully, this really didn't come out as too soon. This, it's been this changed is, many times. This is right on time. <laughs> yeah. But um, it I is, mean, crazy geeky things like it's got air ducts, cooling ducts when it's in rotary mode. So they line up and you can see daylight through there when you put a torch, so they push air through onto the pad. It's almost like a Scooby Scoop. It I is. do like a Scooby Scoop. Yep. So, um, so there are lots of nice touches. Any other nice touches you want to highlight? Can we, can we pop your top, so to speak? Oh, you want me to? Let me, let me get an Alan key. I think I'm just going to go and get Alan, because he's got a key. <laughs> for this. Alan, Essentially, inside this, when we do open up, I already had a sneaky peek under the covers, um, there is some very cool mechanical engineering going on in there. Um, Kelly's just going to find out. Oh, he's cooperated. That's good. Obviously, I've got to get not a metric Allen key. Because oh, they're American, so we're going to need Imperial. Yes. So, and to be fair, last time we got Imperial in America, they got very upset with us. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean Colonial. Whoops. <laughs> so, so, it's quite fascinating because what you can see, and now you can see it's all messed in there, and that's, you know, it's a proper job. So, what I'm going to do is I'll turn it all line up now. We're going to have a problem, we're going to have a real problem here because I didn't set the rotary mode. <laughs> with the pad. <laughs> Ooh, so let's put that back on this way. But to be able to adjust it, so all I've got to do is line up this never backing had, plate. Never had this problem on Blue Peter. <laughs> no, they didn't. So <laughs> John Leslie. Yes it. So now we're out there. I just need a lot. So now I can show you. Yeah. So yeah, you've got you can see that there's there's the spindle going one way and the counterbalance going the other. And and there's a gearbox in there that's doing that, it's bevel gears and and to do that, and you can not see the different weights in there for different size backing plates. So this is a really clever thing. When you realise is with a DA is that you've got a counterweight to and make that's it, it smooth. It's fixed. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's the, fixed. And the counterweight has to, it, it, yeah, it's exactly, it's fixed. It's so spinning on its spot, and then the, the pad location is offset, yeah. and there's a counterweight the other side. It's just a fixed item. So it's just orbiting around an axis, and you've got a counterbalance weight opposing the offset. This, both are completely moving mm. in tandem to counteract that. I really want to borrow this and just take it completely apart and have a look, but I've been told I'm not allowed not because it's the only one at the moment. <laughs> and also, if I take something apart, I ain't going back together again. <laughs> yeah. One thing I would comment it's on. It's not Subaru. <laughs> they always go back together again. Or they mysteriously burn and the insurance claim is made. Um, look at the size of this bearing. It's got a proper hunky, yeah. hunky yeah, bearing there. Yeah. That's, that's a, it's a very um, industrial, mm. robust, you know, all of this is all metal, uh, alley, yeah, and there's aluminium in there. Make a great murder weapon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, there's a lot lot going on there. In terms of thing, have you got um, soft start? Yes. And variable speed? Yes. Yep. So it ticks all of those boxes. Yeah. Any other features you think we would be wise to tell people about? Mm, apart from, I suppose there's things that other manufacturer, they've got the airflow going through and you can see there's very large cooling ducts there. Mm -hmm. So what they've done here, and this is probably why this warms up, you don't have this same gearbox on a normal conventional machine. And you'll notice on other machines where this cooling is, mm -hmm. or the air exiting, is in a different position, it's further up. Yes. Now, you, so they've got very large holes to yeah. make sure the motor, because of the 1200 watt, is running cool. Two decent sized ducts then. Uh, there's actually, if you look, yeah, oh, yeah, there's actually underneath as well. I think, you know, slightly fat yeah. hard. Definitely. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's going to be a great machine. It's, mm. ooh, you've got a hole switch as well. Yeah, of course, it's, it's mm. all the normal things you'd see on a normal machine. They've not put them on. It's soft start. It's got variable speed controller. It's even that, as you adjust it, it ramps up slowly. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's electronic. It's not just on or off. Yeah. So, yeah. So, big question. When can we get our hands on it? Not the Royal Wheels in. When, when can people okay. get their hands on it by passing with their money? About £700, we're thinking. Probably, yep. Yeah. So at the moment, it was originally meant to be summer in the UK, which is now as we film. This mm. should have been available. Can you tell? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit warm. And so it was meant to be in North America late spring, mm -hmm. and it was meant to be two, three months here later, so summer. Well, North American was supposed, so surely they'll send it to us first, right? <laughs> yeah. So. It was meant to be the wax stock that UK you could actually purchase them on the wax stock. We know how close we are now to what mm. would have been the wax stock, but because of the coronavirus, that's set this back and obviously like set everybody back in the world. The last I've heard is that means in America it's going to be really mid to late summer, mm. and we're looking at September currently. So September they should land and be Christmas available. Present. Yeah, yeah. Put that around your tree. I, the, yeah, September is what we're hoping for, planning for. They're in production now. Mm -hmm. There is a you know, past source certificates. They've been tested. Many famous detailers around the world have actually had these for a few weeks and were told to do their worst. And that's a really good point, actually. If you want to see this thing in action and get some more kind of feedback on its actual use, you, you, it. you will find people. Yeah. You've got Rennie Doyle, you've got yep. Mike Phillips, you've Larry got Cazilla. Larry Casilla, yep. lovely guy. Um, and of course, you will have Pro Detailer magazine where we will put in yep. some feedback once our actual detail is done in, rather than me just poking and prodding and seeing. I mean, right, let's see what I can do. I mean, I've got ideas where there'll be free to enter competitions. I've already been speaking mm -hmm. to Lake Country Manufacturing and LC Power Tools about this that someone in certain organisations and groups can come down and have a, a half a day playing with touchy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's what we're trying to do. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's my role. It's, and I want to do that. I like doing that. How do you, you're, you're global, remind me, global, global, you're director of global training. Oh, that's very fancy. It is very fancy. Isn't I, it? Way of saying ambassador, not, ambassador, technical ambassador, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously I start as an influencer, then it become a brand ambassador. Very quick journey where you don't want to be an influencer. So no, 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 races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. So, uh, no, so it's, it's trying to help everybody really and use yeah. this machine. Copies kit. This is the last video that we've yeah. done here. We can actually go and sit and cool in a minute, can't oh, we? Oh, that would be awesome. Um, and we're going to get some 
B-roll this, we're going to do a shoot around this lovely workshop and we're going to be putting loads more into issue 11. You can grab your copy at www.pro-detailer.com. At this time it is customary to shake hands. Yeah. Obviously with COVID we can't, we did share our diseases earlier but none of us got COVID, it's mostly just the clap. Um, but all I'd like to say is thank you very no much problem. Kelly for putting up with us here. Should we do an elbow bump? Yeah, go on it. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> You've now got herpes. <laughs> Moving on, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch up soon. Bye-bye.